So I was sitting here debating on doing a video or a live stream, but then Cappy sounded off and sent me an ad hoc video from about two weeks ago where ad hoc was complaining about us telling him that like he needs bully to like get his head right. I don't think ad hoc understands the basic premise, right? Of what socialization is supposed to be, right? Because what socialization is supposed to do is knock the rough edges off of another human being, right? Like, it's basically like taking a bunch of rocks, throwing them in a rock tumbler, right? And then having them all come out smooth so that, like, they can all, you know what I mean, like, fit in the same holes. It's kind of where everything is. And the point of standing here, like, fucking with somebody until they fix the shit that's wrong with them is to make them uncomfortable enough in their skin to where they sit here and start thinking about what they're doing. Now, understand something. This this is all out of love, all right? This is not really about ad hoc as per se, but about ad hoc's mentality, which is a very feminine way of looking at things. And I have his video, and we're going to break it down. And we're going to sit here and actually like really dig deep and think about things because I've been doing a lot of thinking about manhood here recently and like what it actually means when you say like, I'm a man, right? Because we had like a whole live stream last week about this type of subject because it's more involved than just like your sexual organs, right? And I feel like that's missing from a lot of this generation. And so... I kind of want to sit here and break down the essence of what a man is supposed to kind of think when he makes these decisions in his life. So let's get into the video and I'm going to chime in. This video is going to get a little personal, but there are things that need to be said here. So a bunch of people basically kind of got together one day and decided to try and pick apart why I'm having so many problems. And this kind of introspection is very uncomfortable for me, but I think it needs to be said. So one of the things they determined is that apparently I have an attitude problem that makes me unfit to fit in with society. The solution is that I basically need to be bullied until I become humbled and, you know, accepting and all this other good stuff. To which I kind of have to clap back and say I have been bullied for 32 years of my life. All right. So let's talk about this, right? Because basically the premise is, is that he told us that he's had a number of jobs, including the military, where... He's taken it upon himself to sit here and complain and say that he wasn't going to do as he was ordered or as he was told by an employer, right? And he stood here and said, well, it was unsafe, it was this, it was that, whatever the case is. And I'll be honest with you, right? The point of socialization as a whole right is so that when you stand here and you look at these decisions and you start thinking about how you interact with the world and interact in life and interact with employment because employment's a contract right whether it be the military whether it be jobs whether it be whatever right like you have to understand that you're not loved there, right? You're there because you're trading your time and some ability for the opportunity to gain a paycheck, right? Like everything that you're touching doesn't belong to you, right? So literally like you're basically just a slave of whoever you're working for as far as things are really concerned. Unless like when the contract was signed or when, when you gained your employment there, they were told like, hey, look, you know, I'm going to be, you know, a cook. And then they try to take you and make you into, you know, I mean, a, a roofer, right? And you go, bro, I'm not a roofer. You know what I'm saying? You need to hire a roofer. I'm not going to roof. You know what I mean? That's not my thing. I'm not good. I don't have the ability, skill set, or want to do these type of jobs, right? And usually 
in employment, these type of things don't happen that often where like, you know, you might go from being a forklift driver to sweep in a dock or like, you know, cleaning up skids or whatever it is. Right. But you're not going to end up, you know, I mean, being a forklift driver. And then, you know, I mean, like the next day they're going to ask you, hey, look, man, um, yeah, we need you to go outside and retard the asphalt in you know i mean the parking lot because like oh you don't have any skill set in being able to tar the ass and they probably wouldn't want you to do it because it would be done like really shittily as far as things are concerned right so like it doesn't matter what your employer tells you to do as a forklift driver right like if they want you to load a truck a certain way if they want you to stand here and like you know drive a certain route if they want you to sit here and like skip over procedures or whatever the case is it doesn't really fucking matter it's their equipment it's their shit you're supposed to do that and you can you know what i mean like oh you can stay hey little mouse want to let you know right now you know what i mean do it you can do it respectfully like hey look i'll be honest with you this is not the way i was taught to do this right but i'll do it for you however you want you know what i mean because like yo you signed the paychecks I'm like oh all right cool right and if it gets fucked up you know what i mean it gets fucked up that's how that works Right. And that's the basic premise of employment as a whole in any employee employer relationship is that you take orders and you do what you're supposed to do. And so this kind of gets into like the point of where it's the decision of what you're doing, even to say these words. Right. Because when ad hoc talks about being bullied. Right. He doesn't really understand what bullying means. Right. Because like when I was bullied, you'd go home and the side of your face would be swollen. Right. And like you'd be bleeding and need stitches. Right. That's what I consider bullying. And the reason why like this type of bullying works is because like yo, when you start making decisions on the whether or not you want to open your fucking mouth and say some ridiculous shit to another human being. It's whether or not you're willing to take that punch in the face afterwards, right? Because, like, back in the day, they had what was known as, you know what I'm saying, like, dueling, right? We walk up and you slap somebody with a glove or whatever, right? Or you slap them with your hand. But I challenge you to a duel. They had a fucking gunfight after that. Somebody had to go. Right? Like, yo, it wasn't some bullshit thing where, like, you know, oh, man, you know, uh, like, I don't, I'm not comfortable with what you're saying. You need to stand here and say whatever. Like, oh, no, 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 right? No, 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 no. It was, you know, look, I'm going to die for this fucking premise, right? And anything that you say at work to a fucking boss, you better be willing to fucking give up your paycheck for it immediately, right? And like, yo, if they make you give up your paycheck after you say what you said, you made a fucking shitty calculation if you weren't ready for that. That's the real premise of fucking bullying is to like give you perspective of what can happen, how badly things can go, right? That's what it is. It's to stand here and give you that counterintuitive narrative in the back of your head that's going to sit here and be like, if I say this, some dumb shit might happen, right? Like you ever heard that military thing where it's like lead, follow, or get out of the way? I'm going to be honest with you. 80% of the time, your job should be to get the fuck out of the way, right? Legit. And I mean, it should be like, yo, I'm, you know what? I don't want to be in front of the fan when this shit hits, right? Or like, hey, look, you know, I'm just going to follow this motherfucker and do what I'm told, right? Because if you're not in charge and it's not your business, you're not leading. That's where the premise really gets down to. But you know what, man? We're going we're gonna to keep going and listen to what he got to say. Pretty much not a day has gone by that I have not been bullied at some point one or another by people who are not of my immediate family. So I would say that bullying is the reason why I have an attitude and why I am the way I am today. All right. So, like, let, let me address this point, too, right? Because this is kind of important. I know I'm, I'm cutting this up a lot. I apologize. But let, let me let me address this. It's really simply put. It's not the fact that he was bullied as to why it is he is the way he is today, right? It's because of how his mother was, right? I'm betting 99.9%, I'm sure, I'm betting, uh, I'll bet $10 
his mother when she like you know what i'm saying stood there and took somebody down a peg or like dressed down ad hoc or dressed down somebody around him or some other male right she had like a smug self-assured fucking like grin about her fucking self-worth right you know what i mean like yo like it it's 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 like Mary Worth's small fucking smile and shit. Look what I can do to Mary Worth's smug sense of self-satisfaction. Now, for the most parts of my early life, it didn't matter as much because I at least had people that I could call friends and that I could count on to be loyal and accepting and all that good fun stuff. That changed roughly about 2001 when I entered middle school. Suddenly, I was no longer surrounded by people that I could call friends, and my peers basically ostracized and outcast me. So I was basically left to suffer at the hands of my peers for the, well, rest of my effective life. <laughs> so this kind of happens to everybody in middle school. Right. You know what I'm saying? You go from like elementary where like you're just a kid or whatever the case is. And then, you know, what I mean, you hit middle school and like everybody kind of starts hitting puberty and, you know, what I mean, starts chasing females and things of this nature. Right. And a lot of people's a lot of men's like first, you know, what I mean, thought pattern is what you do is, is you stand here and, you know, what I mean, you talk shit about the other dudes or you try to be the toughest guy there. Or like, you know, you stand here and you start doing sports like. Because basically it becomes a contest of who is the top individual because individuals want to be able to sit here and, you know, I mean, have the opportunity to talk to females and have the opportunity to sit here and be seen as somebody who's more of a leader. Right. And this is where you start sorting things out. And so a lot of people get pushed to like the fringes as far as shit's concerned in middle school, right? And it's just, it's just how the fuck shit ends up happening, right? And I'm be honest with you, you know what I mean? Like the way that like I kind of stopped this from happening was to be more violent, right? Was to stand here and do drugs, was to sit here well to smoke weed, right? And to drink and to sit here and you know, I mean, be more reckless because like this is how you end up, you know, I mean, like being respected as an individual in places like middle school. Right. You know, I mean, because that tends to be how it works. And I understand that, like, you know, I mean, like a lot of people have a hard time going through this because, like, you know, they're good kids and they're good people and they're raised by proper parents. But, like, the reality is, is that, you know, nobody really gives a shit, <laughs> right? Like, nobody really cares, you know what I mean? And school's a terrible place to be as a whole. I hated fucking school, right? I got suspended constantly, like, legit, like, 7th, 8th, and then 8th grade again. Like, dude, each year I had more than 100 days in fucking suspension. Like, school sucks. It just is what it is. You know, and like your peer group is going to be who your peer group is. And like, if you don't have one, that's okay too. You just fucking just go and do what you're supposed to do. Or you don't. One of the two. You know, I mean, like, it's just, this is, again, you have to learn, you know, I mean, your place in the pecking order and what everybody is fucking doing. You kind of got to like fit in somewhere in there. Right. This is why sports are so goddamn important, because like it gives you a basic peer group of individuals who are your like they're your part of your fucking team. Right. You're a part of their organization. They are reliant upon you. And like you know, they want to build that bond with you as as a human. Right. This is you know, this is why these things are important for fucking kids, whether or not you're smart or whether or not whatever. Like, yo. Kids who we played baseball with, like us really Billy badass fucking dudes, there were some of them who like, you know, they were still in the neighborhood and like they ended up getting fucked with. And when they did, you know, I mean, like, yo, we came to their rescue because like they were part of our peer group. This is kind of the problem with modern day American fucking kids raised by their fucking moms. Right. Legit is that you miss out on all this male bonding and this male shit because like moms don't fucking comprehend stuff. 
and we keep teaching kids that what's important is being fucking smart and in reality that doesn't fucking matter and it's going to end up making you into being this like shit bag of a human being later on in life because you didn't gain any real fucking skills so that's another I would say 21 years of actual effective bullying in total and the solution is that I need to be bullied even more I don't necessarily agree with this I'm kind of the product of a society that says you need to stand up to bullies and you know not let them push you around and whatnot the thing is is that I tried to suck up to the people who were effectively bullying me because well that was pretty much effectively anyone and everyone I didn't really have any friend groups going around I didn't really have anybody at all basically people who just tolerated me and kind of kept me around so they could bully me and you know shame me and all this other fun stuff all right so like the reality is he's a product of Disney like we were talking about this the other day in this in the discord me and Cappy and Naviston right and like I get I get frustrated with you know I mean virtue signaling government officials and bureaucrats who like you know they'll do the right thing they're like oh, Putin's a bully so we need to stand up to him and fight against him sitting here slaughtering Ukrainians or not respecting the sovereignty of these countries and as a man, I stand here and I go like, yo, look, that's his house. Like, it's his fucking business. It doesn't matter what the fuck he does, right? But, like, we have this entire generation of human beings that don't understand that, like, not everything's your fucking business, right? Like, I can watch a woman getting beaten in the streets and, like, do what you do, Pippin. That's your bitch. It ain't mine. I don't care, right? Because it's not my fucking woman. It's not my problem. It's not my people as a whole, right? And this is, this is a mentality that a lot of individuals just straight missed, like, completely. Because, again, they were raised by women and raised by these dudes who, you know I mean, were, like, brought up on these westerns and Disney movies about, like, you know, John Wayne going, Hey there, partner, you can't be slapping around the women folk that way. Right, and you're just like, shut up, dummy. You know what I mean? Like, yo, legit. In real life, I'd have punched that motherfucker in the face. But <laughs> like, yo, and he would have done a fucking thing about it. Like, John Wayne, like, yo, fuck that dude, right? He's too big to fucking swing back. Anyway, right? So, like, the problem comes down to with, like, this mentality that ad hoc has where like he's like oh these people only keep me around you know i mean because like you know fucking they want to bully me and fuck with me that's not the truth the reason why people keep you around is because you're useful at that moment right you have to remember as a dude right as a male as a man like legitimately the only things in the world that are loved unconditionally are women dogs and children right if you're a man you have to stand here and offer something Right. You're as valuable as what you have to offer to the world. That's reality. It don't matter whether you like it, but that's just the fucking truth. And the moment you become more of a problem than you motherfucking are worth, they'll fucking stop dealing with you. That's real life. So, like, you always want to be an individual who, you know what I mean, does what the fuck they're told, you know what I mean, and, like, does the fucking job whether or not it's, you know what I mean, right or wrong, like, fucking the hell with it, you know what I mean, like, yo, you asked me to get some shit done, I got it done, and they're like, well, you know, it's not done right, I'm like, <laughs> yo, look here, bro, all right, you did not give me the tools, ability, or motherfucking time to get it done properly, you told me to get it the fuck done, I got it the fuck done, it's that simple, and I've never had a boss stand here and have a problem with this, legitimately. Right, because the boss goes, well, you know, fucking, <laughs> like, you know, is what it is. Like, I made my fucking, I told you, like, I, I told you when this happened. Like, hey, look, this was going to be fucked up. You know what I mean? And it's much better that you deal with shit afterwards than you deal with it then. Legitimately, right? Because no boss wants to hear, it can't be done, right? Because, like, yo, the boss thinks it can, right? And so, like, when you do it and it's half-assed or it's fucking not done right, but it's done, and the boss stands here and, you know what I mean, later on goes, hey, man, remember when I told you to do that thing? It's like, yeah, I remember I told you we weren't going to have fucking time to be able to get it done properly. And you said, man, just do what you can do. And I did what I could do. And he's like, okay. Never have I had a boss stand here and have a problem with this. Ever. 
like ever, right? Because like, yo, literally the boss told me to get it done and I did. It's that simple, it's that basic. And you told him at the time, like, hey man, look, this is, this is probably not going to work right, but I'll, I'll do what you ask. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, do what you can do, man. It's that simple. It's that, it's that basic. Like, I don't know why this is fucking difficult for fucking people like Ad Hoc. It's None of this is fucking hard to understand. Legit. Like, let's keep going. You'd probably say, well, that's because you were a weeb. Well, no, I didn't really kind of get into that scene until I was much older and about midway through high school. During the middle school years, I was basically just trying to figure out why it is I was ostracized. Apparently, I wasn't as charismatic as the rest of my peers, which didn't help things any. Well, the problem is, is that now I'm an adult, I'm all grown up and whatnot, and everybody has moved on in their lives to do adult things, and those bullies have now effectively moved into positions of authority. How and why, I have no clue, but I would say it's because they bullied their way into those positions and they were also effectively more charismatic as me. This world is basically run by extroverts. It's not what you know, it's who you know, and that's... That's a problem for people like me. All these bullies that he keeps speaking of legitimately, what it is is that, like, you know, it's individuals who didn't like him, right? Because, like, a real bully, you know I mean? Like, I would absolutely agree they would probably be running things, but it's because, like, most individuals who are willing to be violent are willing to risk everything all the fucking time, right? And if you're willing to risk more than the next guy, you are more likely to be successful. It's a basic ass premise, right? Like when you look at um, kids, there's like two types of kids: there's guys who kids who are risk adverse, the kids who are more risk prone, right? And I mean, like, and you'll run into them, right? Like everybody knew these kids growing up who were like the kid who would like pop a wheelie going like six blocks down the street or whatever, right? Or the kid who just jump off of shit all the fucking time. Like that kid tended to end up being a very successful adult, right? Or he ended up burning out and going to jail. One of the two, right? Because, like, these kids, right, are individuals who are much more willing to risk and go the whole way with everything all the time. And that's kind of the basic premise of shit, right? So, like, if you're a coward and you're not willing to risk anything and you're not willing to go to the mattresses over fucking nonsense, then you're probably not going to be successful either. Right. And this is, you know, I mean, kind of where shit gets down to. Right. So, like, if you're willing to risk, you know, I mean, like saying some nonsense because, like, it's the unpopular thing to say. Right. Like, you know, like, oh, man, you know, you shouldn't treat homosexuals that way. Right. Nobody's going to punish you for that. Right. But if, like, you're the guy who's like, you know, I mean, like, man, fuck that faggot. Right. You're probably going to end up, you know what I'm saying, not being very successful. Like, it's just how it works. (laughs) Right. Because, like, oh, you're making decisions, you know what I mean, without, like, having the ability to back it the fuck up. You're not willing to lose your job. You're not willing to fucking stand. Like, you can't complain about shit that you fucking do and make decisions to do if you don't, you know what I mean, like, if you're not willing to pay the fucking price for it. That's kind of where shit gets down to. So... Now those same bullies that <clears throat> I determined that effectively, you know, sucking up to during my middle and high school years were not worth doing so. So basically I just kind of said fuck it and moved on. Now they're the ones in positions of power and I gotta kiss their ass and suck shit and do what I need to do in order to survive. Well, I have a problem with that. So when I first listened to this video... Uh, I was reminded of a quote from Mahatma Gandhi, but I couldn't find it, right? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm gonna read you this one. It says, self-defense by violence. I have been repeating over and over again that he who cannot protect himself or his nearest or dearest honor by non-violently facing death may and ought to do so by violently dealing with the oppressor. He who can, neither, who can do neither of the two is a burden. He has no business to be the head of a family. He must either hide himself or must rest content to live forever in helplessness and be prepared to crawl like a worm and at the bidding of a bully. 
The strength to kill is not, is not essential for self-defense. One ought to have the strength to die. When a man is fully ready to die, he will not even desire to offer violence indeed. I may put it down a self-evident proposition that the desire to kill is inverse pro uh, pro uh, proportion to the desire to die. And the history is replete with instances of men who, by dying with courage and compassion on their lips, converted the hearts of their violent oppressed opponents. So this is kind of where I get down to, right? Like, if you're a coward, right, and you're not willing to sit here and risk and go out and do your own shit, right? When it comes to like things like business. If you're not willing to sit here and go, well, I don't want to keep working for these dude bros. I want to work for myself, right? Then you have a problem in your head. It's not a problem with them. It's a problem with you. Because like real shit. I don't like working for big corporations. I used to enjoy it because like I liked being a number and being able to disappear. But like when these corporations started cracking down on their restrictions on what I was capable and able to do, I ended up having a massive problem with it because I could no longer get lost in the crowd because I was always like getting singled out about little petty nonsense. So I'm now an independent contractor, so I don't have to deal with this shit. And I work at night, so again, I don't have to deal with this shit. See what I'm saying here about this type of shit, right? Is that like you need to either A, you know what I'm saying? Like fucking be willing to go out here and start your own fucking business doing something or anything the fuck else. B, you know what I'm saying? Sit here and like yo, learn how to work around the fucking system as a whole. And figure a way in where, like, you don't have to, like, deal with all their dude bro nonsense, right? Or C, continue to grovel and deal with your shit. And I'll be honest with you. I think you do need to deal with your shit. Like, legit. I think it's something that you need to have a conversation in your head with yourself about. Like, you need to sit here and figure out that, like, it's not the dude bros that are bothering you. Right. These aren't bullies. They're just dude bros. Right. The dude bros are not the ones who are, who are the issue. Right. Because like legitimately, there's always going to be dude bros. Like there's always going to be, you know, I mean, like just guys who go, dude, man, listen. All right. My BMW was broke down this weekend, man. All right. And like, I'm going to tell you what. It was a pain. I had to go and get wheels put down. Ad hoc. Dude, go get me some coffee, ad hoc. All right, guy. Because, you know, I'm, you're not as important as I am. Right. There's always going to be those fucking guys. Like no matter what you do. Right, legit. No, no matter how the fuck you live, no matter what the fuck you do, you're always going to be them fucking guys, right? Just part of life, you know what I mean? And you're going to have to deal with them unless, like, you are willing to look that motherfucker in the eye and be willing to die that fucking moment, right? And be able to portray this or be able to, like, stand here and, how do I put this? Portray it non-violently, Right? Like, I actually had a boss one time. I got rode up because I looked at him the wrong way. Literally just looked at him. He was so fucking terrified. He ran to the fucking, like, the head of the fucking office. Like, I can't deal with that driver, man. The way he looked at me, it's like I was going to die. I was so terrified. Right? And legitimately, like, I went in and they're like, you need to pay this guy some fucking respect. And I'm like... Yo, why would I pay this guy respect? He ain't never said no fucking words to me. He said, look, you still ain't even talking to him. The whole conversation between me and the office manager, right? And I was a driver, right? Legit. And this dude didn't say one word. He fucking kept his head down and looking at his fucking thighs the entire time. This is how this shit operates, right? Like, yo, but you know what happened? I went back to work and that motherfucker like legitimately went back to doing nothing or whatever fucking nonsense that he did all day. And I'll be real, he never said six words to me the whole time. And I had no issue with him. He was another Italian kid out of Chicago. Right? But he was a bitch. There's a lot of motherfuckers out here in this manner. You have to figure out what it is you need to do to get your fucking screw face on. This is why people say that, like, bullying you is the solution. Right? Because what they want to do is toughen you up to the point where you're dangerous. So that you aren't a bitch anymore. 
so that you can have the confidence to walk up to somebody with the screw face on and go, hey, how you doing? What can I do for you today? Right? And you're not portraying any type of motherfucking vibe that like, yo, you can fuck with me. There's no point. There's nothing about you that says you can fuck with me. That's what the bullying's about. It's because individuals want to make you tough enough and strong enough and confident in yourself, excuse me, enough that legitimately you're able to sit here and go, you ain't, you know what I mean? You ain't fucking scaring me none. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck you going to do? Like, say some stupid shit. And you can say it without even fucking saying a word, just looking at a motherfucker with your stance. That's the mentality that individuals are trying to, like, fucking break into you. But you're having a real hard time picking up on this idea as an in general concept. Again, because paradoxically, I was raised on the notion that you need to stand up to bullies and, you know, make it clear that you're not going to let yourself get pushed around. That's generally where my attitude comes from, and that's why I am considered to have a problem with authority. Why? Well, the authority is now the very bullies that I said, I'm not going to take your fucking shit anymore. So, here I am, a very confused 32-year-old who doesn't understand what the fuck society has twisted itself into now. And this is generally why I don't like to socialize with people outside on, uh, in generally real life. Because when you're effectively an outcast of outcasts, to the point where nobody really cares to hang out with you in the first place, you don't really get invited out all that much. And when you do, you just end up being a punching bag for everyone else. So, you... You go online, you find the places that'll... are more accepting of you than you have been in meat space, and that's generally where you stay. And the solution for... That is to just be bullied until I get out there and I... I... I don't know, fit in or something? I don't get it. See, when they stand here and they say you stand up to bullies, right? What they're actually saying is is that you punch that motherfucker in the face. Right? That's, that's what they're really actually saying. Is that like oh, when you stand up to a bully, what you do is you fucking crack him. Right? You have to be willing to be violent. Right? You can't just sit there and go, no, I'm not going to do it. Because, like, nobody's going to respect you. Like, nobody's, nobody wants to deal with that person. Right? Like, everybody's going to go, like, oh, man, listen, like, <sighs> being nonviolent because you don't have the ability to be violent is cowardice is the issue. Right. And you have to solve your cowardice problem. You have to be willing to punch somebody in the face. And if you're not really willing to like go the whole way of like dying, like real shit, like actually dying, like you have to be willing to die for your sneakers. Right. <laughs> you like real. That's the reality. Like that's what people respect. Right, yo, it's you like when you stand up to the bully, you're putting fear into them. Right? It's not you're sitting here going like, I'm not going to tolerate you standing here doing this to me. And you're just gonna get punched in the face again. Right? And I'm not gonna tolerate what you're doing to me. And then you get get punched in the face again. I'm not going to stand here and let you do this. And then you get punched in the face again. Right? Because like you're not actually like fucking standing up to the bully. You're just saying you are, is the problem, right? You're not actually, like, fucking doing anything other than bitching, right? And so this is what women do, right? And women, like, when women stand here and bitch, like, people move mountains to stop shit, right? And this is where, like I say, your attitude's feminine, right? And there's a lot of this, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of this in the world because, like, we have a lot of dudes who are raised by females and not around enough males, right? Legit, like, so... When you stand here and you just bitch instead of like actually taking action, you're being a woman. <laughs> and this is kind of the problem, right? Like you got to look at him like your macho man Randy Savage. You go, ooh, 
I'm the cream of the crop there. I'm not going to sit here and tolerate you doing this to me no more. Ooh. I'm going to take you and I'm going to beat you. Right, like you got to be willing to like really go ham. You have to be willing to stand up and like fucking really get it done with. And I mean like you have to be willing to die. And if you're not willing to die, right, for yourself and for your self-respect and for your honor, then you're not actually fucking willing to make any changes. Because people will get away with whatever they're willing to get away with as long as you let them. And like, so, um, I don't know if you ever saw Braveheart, right? It's a great movie. You ever have a chance to check it out. But there's this one scene that always stuck with me. He said, um... He said, uh, he, he said, you, you like this, man. You want to go fucking fight beside him, right? He's, you know, he said, yeah, man, he's uncompromising, right? Uncompromising men are, you know what I mean, always easy to love, right? He has courage, but so does a dog, right? But we love dogs. And again, dogs are loved unconditionally. That's kind of where it gets down to. Right, that's why you always see like those bad boy dudes with tattoos and a giant ass jail record, right? And like, you know, they'll sit here and they'll have, you know, like the baddest bitch on their arm, right? They'll have a female with a really good job and a nice car, a nice house, right? And like this dude will just treat her like shit on a regular basis. Like, yo, that's because people like guys who are willing to fucking be uncompromising, and if you're not uncompromising, right, then you're really not going to be fucking, like, respected as a man. Like, respect as a man comes from your ability to take action. And, like, and it's not just with, like, your ability to take action as far as, like, um, how do I put this? Your ability to take action as far as, like, you know what I mean, like, violence, but it's also doing things, right? Like... You, know, you gotta be able to like do things like work on shit and like be useful to other human beings, right? That's why like people like me. Why? Because I can like fix their brakes, right? In their car, I can you know I me. Mean? I can sit there and like you know help them fix their fucking equipment and shit. And, you know I mean their fucking chainsaws, their tractors, their lawnmowers, or you know I mean their weed whackers, whatever. Because I'm fucking handy. People like men like me because I'm useful. And I offer them something. And on top of that, in doing so, it lets them know that I spent time dedicating myself to learning something. Which means that I have discipline. What do you have in your life that tells anybody that? That's the real question, my friend. What do you have around you that portrays the other men... That you are a disciplined, character-driven, honorable human being that they would want to have around them. I really don't get it. Because the solution to my problems and why I am not socially acceptable and, you know, a successful member of society is to continue to be bullied until I get it. But paradoxically, I'm supposed to stand up for myself and not take any shit. This is a dilemma. And one that has no easy solution. I am the way I am because of... being bullied. And... I need to continue to be bullied until I am socially... Yeah. See, this is why people are so fucked up in the head. And honestly, anyone who says, now hold up, chief, I did okay for myself and I went through the same process, you're just a fucking wimp. I would say, if you went through the same process that I did and you were bullied the same I was, are you really okay yourself? I would make that argument. I would sincerely make the argument that, Chief, if you suffered like I did, are you really okay yourself? 
It's like the entire thing is designed to produce people who are one step away from being a complete and total psychopath. And the only reason I haven't been coerced into becoming some kind of sick-in-the-head mass shooter myself is I've taken a step back to look at that and said, that's not the kind of legacy I want to leave behind. No, let's let's keep this 100% honest here. All right. Um, yes, people are okay. And the reason why is, is that like <sighs> Mahatma Gandhi, right? I gotta go back to him. He said passivism is not you know i mean like not having fucking conflict it's being willing to like deal with it right and that's a beautiful statement right and i go to mahatma gandhi because like when you start talking about these type of things right it's really good to look at like individuals who had deep thoughts on the ideas of violence conflict you know fucking um human interactions right and so when you start talking about like the social structure and like how the socialization works, right? Yes, you're fine, right? The problem is you are a wimp, right? That's the issue. The issue is, is that you are a wimp and you had individuals around you who allowed you to motherfucking like stand here and be a coward about these things, right? Rather than telling you that you need to change, they said that you need to accept, they need to accept you for who you are. And that's not true because who you are sucks. <laughs> legit, right? Who you are is fucking hot garbage in the end of the your entire life who have sat here and just coddled the bullshit out of you is the issue right you weren't properly bullied right you just had a whole bunch of passive aggressive shit happen to you that's the reality of things and so you know you ask why aren't you a school shooter well like the reality is you don't have the discipline to fucking do this that's that's the reality of it right like yo you don't have the ability inside of you to be able to pull that fucking trigger. <laughs> right? That's the issue. It's like, oh, are we all okay? Yeah, we're fucking fine, dude. Legit, everybody's okay. It's just motherfuckers have become women. All right? And like you have to deal with your female tendencies about shit. And understand that what you are doing is being a female. And what you know is completely wrong in life. Your value set is fucking wrong. Completely. That's what you have to start really looking at. In the end of the day. Is that you are fucking wrong about what you think. And how you feel. And the way you interact with other human beings. And what you think about other human beings. Even though that's the route that I have been put on. It's the path that people are pushing me down and I am trying to resist going down that path. You know, it's shit like this that actually kind of makes me sit down and wonder if the people who say that all masculinity is toxic may have a point. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm necessarily going to suddenly switch over and agree with them suddenly on everything they say. No, because they're still doing their own mental gymnastics and hypocrisy twisting in and on and of itself, and I, I don't like that. That's why I have a problem with this now, is because of the mental gymnastics here. Which then I have to uh, beg, the, which then begs the question: Why would I accept the mental gymnastics over there? But for this, I can see that maybe they have a point. If this is the direction that we are being pushed, are we really okay? I don't know. I I really don't think we are. 
like the problem when it comes down to is is the portrayal of families and human beings in popular entertainment right like when you stand here and you see things on you know i mean your tv or in movies it's not reality it's not real life and so you end up with these morals which are collectively like culminated through everybody viewing this and then processing it through your lens because like you're seeing other human beings interact and you tend to sit here and have it uh you know i mean like portrayed back to like back into your like basic social level right when in reality the vast majority of humans living in america don't live in the tv world right they don't like the sweet life of zach and cody for instance like how many fucking kids actually have the ability to be like left alone at five and six years old and like like what parent would trust a fucking bellhop with their fucking kids you know what i mean kids would have a fucking credit card and no parents are ever the fuck around like these entire fucking premises and these entire morals that are given to us are dead wrong and ad hoc has bought into them completely right instead of standing here having some type of culture or heritage or things about him he's so fucking american that he lacks all forms of a culture and value set that didn't come from a fucking tv or a fucking advertisement to sell you shit right he didn't understand and he probably still doesn't understand that he's a product. You are a fucking product. You are being sold to corporations for fucking view time and advertisements. Right? And this is what you what happened to you your whole fucking life and you don't get it. Right? When in reality like yo the world around you was a whole different animal than you think it is. And you need real fucking morals and real manhood and real honor and real discipline to survive. And you don't have any of these fucking things. This is just the reality of where it is, dude. Like, fuck, yes, we're all fucking fine. And no, masculinity's not the problem. The problem is your lack of masculinity! <laughs> Because if everyone's getting pushed down the same path and we're all one step away from just going batshit crazy uh, mass shooter, then I think that's a problem we really need to solve. And here's the, the kicker. The kicker is that the entire branch of psychology has pointed this out and they're still right even though i hate what they've done to me they have not helped me in the slightest but this is where i gotta give them credit in that they get it right you know we sh could and should be doing things differently but no i mean this is what people want to go back to this is what is considered the norm And I'm just not sure we've been doing this right. Because if the end result is, you know, people like me who are effectively kind of caught between, you know, trying to be a good person and one step away from becoming a psychopath, you know... <laughs> That's kind of a rock in a hard place, and it's kind of hard to try and figure out where exactly you need to be for this. But in any case, I'm just rambling at this point, and, you know, I'm probably going to catch flack on both sides about this. But ultimately, you know, maybe I'm just screaming into the void. Uncle Ted talks about like the helplessness that individuals feel when they're surrounded by giant corporations, governments, churches or communities, whatever the case might be. Right. And 
they, he stands here and he talks about these type of things where he goes like, you know, like they end up trying to rebel and, you know, like they pick out things that you rebel against as a college individual or whatever the case is, right? And they have like a standard list and they're used as, you know what I mean, like fucking useful idiots by corporations, you know, like Nike who, you know what I mean, sat here and, you know, like use Colin Kaepernick, right? And everybody bought into it, even though, like, you know, they have fucking slave shops in fucking China making their shit. It's the idea of human beings, yes, are being pushed and forced into a a terrible position. And I'll I'll completely agree with that, right? Because, like, you know, I, I see America as the new Sparta, right? It's kind of what it is. It's the idea that, like, oh, you're going to motherfucking either be driven or you're going to end up, you know what I mean, like, in the fucking ground. One of the two, right? You're going to either be successful or you're going to be fucked. It's one of the two. But there is kind of, like, a middle ground here, right? And the middle ground is to learn how to find a bullshit niche and make enough money to be okay and, you know what I mean, like, start hitting that minimalism path to get you to the level of where, like, yo, you're okay and you can build up a little bit of wealth and figure out your life and what really matters to you and what you want out of it, you know, and being, like, the idea that, like, you end up as a psychopath is fucking dumb. It's just you stop giving a fuck about nonsense, right? Like, why would you want to be a good person, right? Like, what the fuck is a good person? And just like psychology, like what is a person, right? I mean, like Sigmund Freud used to say, like the Irish were, you know what I mean, like uh, incapable of, you know what I mean, being fucking uh, psychoanalytically analyzed, right? Because of the fact that like, yo, different people are different. Cultures are different. Human beings are different. Their diet, their fucking needs, their fucking shit, just all this shit's different, right? There's no one standard human being. We're not all the same. So to stand here and go like psychological psych- uh, psychology has it right? No, they don't. They don't have it right either. Nobody does, right? Because like we're not addressing human beings as human beings, as animals, as you know, parts of a culture, parts of a pack, parts of a family, parts of a community, people that come from an area that evolved for thousands and thousands and thousands of years that are now all in a new fucking place that you know what I mean all need different shit to be able to fit into where the fuck they gotta go. Right to get them to a basic premise of being the best them that they can be, not the best small fucking, you know, I mean, cognitive worker. Right, there's a reason why they used to prescribe small fucking like, you know, um, <clears throat> drugs to fucking housewives and shit. Right, they used to give them fucking quaaludes to get them through their fucking day because of the fact that they were fucking bored. They prescribe Adderall to full grown adults, which is basically cocaine. Right, why? Why do they do this? Well, actually, it's meth, right? You won't be technical, right? Well, why do they do this? Is it so that they can become more productive workers? What do you want to be? What's important to you? Do you have anything? This is kind of the point. This is why, like, oh, you're a coward. You're not willing to die for anything because you don't have anything you're willing to die for. You have no parts of your life that fucking matters, Right, and the reason why you don't have anything that matters is because of the fact that you were never taught how to be a fucking man in the first fucking place. That's the reality of it. It's because your mama stood there and fucking, you know, I mean, coddled the shit out you and had you on your fucking teddy too fucking long. That's the reality of it. That's what the fuck's actually going on. It's the fact that, like, legitimately, like, yo, you have no passions. Nothing about you is fucking, like, enjoyable. Your life is fucking miserable. You're either motherfucking working on some bullshit technical thing for your fucking job or you're in fucking Discord or on fucking, you know what I mean, some website spanking your fucking, you know what I mean, Pekka to some fucking 2D anime bitch. It's a miserable way to be. Right? You don't enjoy anything because, like, yo, you don't really put yourself 100% into anything. Because, like, oh, you don't see any fucking value in doing things. But, again, these are all things that, like, oh, you have to learn how to address about your life. You have to find things that you fucking enjoy. That make your life worth fucking living. Like, I got my kids. I got fishing. I got fucking motors and shit. I got things that I love. 
the end of the day. I have stuff that I love doing. You, as a human being, as a man, have to figure out what it is that you love. That you are willing to motherfucking stand here and go to the mattresses for. And it has to be deeper than a child's fucking movie from the 1970s. Right? Like Darth Vader's not going to do it for you. Popular culture is not something you should motherfucking worship. Because in the end of the day, again, you're nothing but a fucking product. All you are is a goddamn number on a spreadsheet to some motherfucker. Actually, you're probably like in a column with other numbers of individuals who are out here buying the fucking merchandise and watching their shit and visiting their websites and arguing on fucking chat boards. In the end of the day, reality is shit. You have to have something about you, about your life, that you're passionate and willing to motherfucking not lose. Or willing to work towards. That makes your life worth living. These are called values. <laughs> this is called culture. Legit. Yo, look. Tom P's of Pinoy News, man. Listen, I love you, bro. But like, yo, you got to get your shit together. Yo,